thank you for coming. My name is Nikola Bajarkowski, and this is Michal Somosberga. We are students at the Chair for Computer Aided Medical Procedures at the Technical University of Munich, and today we are going to talk how augmented reality can be used in medicine. So, have you watched a Hollywood movie and actually your jaw dropped because of the technology that has been displayed? Did you ask yourself, can I have this at home? I do, all of the time. As you can see here in this example from the movie Iron Man, we see new kind of technology. What we know nowadays is that we have a computer, and we have a keyboard with bunch of buttons, and we also have a mouse. And that's how we interact with the data. We click, and we are able to open or close different kinds of data. But now we see something different. We see a virtual object that are floating in the air. And we see the actor that is using, for example, pitching in order to interact with this data. He's also using his hands in order to be able to enlarge the objects, virtual objects, and also to move them on the side. And maybe you're wondering right now, do we have a concept that can do this, what we see right now in this example? Can I have these virtual objects in my home? Can I also interact with them? Do we have this concept? I can tell you that something similar exists nowadays, and it's called augmented reality. But what exactly is augmented reality? As a concept, augmented reality represents overlaying virtual objects over the environment that we see. And not only virtual objects, we can also overlay sound, we can also overlay text. It goes beyond overlay because it gives us the opportunity to interact with them. Since we both study biomedical computing, which is the intersection between computer science, engineering, and medicine, we wanted to show you how this concept can be used into the medical workflow. And one way how we can use this augmented reality in medicine is to change the way that information, for example, images, is displayed to the doctors. And nowadays in medicine, images play a very important role. Because imagine what doctors would do if they had no imaging. In fact, up until 100 years ago, doctors did not have any imaging. So to find a diagnosis, they could look at the patients from the outside and take samples, for example, of blood or urine. But to really see what is happening inside the body of a patient, they had to cut the patients directly and look at the inside. So this changed a lot in the last century because a lot of new imaging technologies have been developed. And now we have a variety of different imaging available all of the time. So the question is, how do we display these images to the doctors? And these are examples of medical workflows, how it is in today's practice. Um, you can see, for example, scenarios of the surgery, and you can see multiple monitors that the surgeons use in order to have this different imaging and this different information. So now imagine you're a surgeon and you have to do operations that you're focusing on the, your hands more or less, on the area of the operation. And at the same time, you have the monitors, and have also, you have also to look at these monitors and get the imaging information that you need. And as you might imagine, that can be a very challenging task. So we are thinking, is there maybe a technology or maybe something that can help us improve this situation? And yes, there might be augmented reality. So here you can see that augmented reality can help us to reduce the number of monitors in the operating room, it can display the images directly in front of the surgeon and show the images directly at the patient where we need them. Also since we have a lot of different imaging or a lot of data available at each moment, we can reduce this to only the really essential information at each point in time. Um, also augmented reality helps us to have a very intuitive and sterile way of interacting with the data that we get during surgeries. And as you can see here, the doctors are all the time wearing special equipment, special glasses. And these glasses are right now the most famous devices for having this augmented reality. And in fact, the most famous glasses here are called the Microsoft HoloLens. But what actually do they have to provide for us in order to have this new technology? If you're wondering when the magic happens, the magic happens when you put the glasses on. They have the power to display virtual objects. For example, right now I see the audience, but also I can see a menu inside the audience. And also, HoloLens can detect hand gestures. For example, if I do right now, tapping, the HoloLens knows that I'm selecting that button from my menu, and it's actually taking the action of tapping. 
Then they can also detect the environment. For example, the Hollands right now know where is that bench, for example, or where is the audience. And they know exactly where to position these virtual objects. Also, if we have some markers where we want to use in our application and we want to have an object that depends on that marker, Hollands can detect that marker and then show our original object at that exact position. Also, they are able to track my position. So, for example, when I'm moving, I don't want the original object to follow me. Of course, if the application doesn't work out of the But usually, what we want to have is we want to have the virtual object as a 3D model in the real world. And then I want to walk around and be able to see it from different angles and different sides. So, we want our object to stay in the exact position. And last but not least, they can also recognize speech. So, for example, instead of using the tapping gesture, you can use voice recognition. For example, tap, and then the Hollands will open the button with selected. So, how this works? What is the technology behind it? The Hollands itself, they contain four cameras. We have four, uh, four cameras here and depth cameras. Those cameras are used to detect, as I said, to detect the environment and also to detect the end gestures. Then, as you can see here, we have this glass. And the glass is used to see the environment around us, to be able to see the real world. Again, inside here, we have a second pair of glasses, which actually are used to display our virtual objects. Then, we have the internal measurement unit, which is kind of GPU for the Hollands. So whenever I'm changing my position, the GPU of the Hollands can detect that. Also, last but not least, we have a microphone that can detect our voice and our voice commands. And we have a speaker that can actually send us some voice commands from the Hollands itself, if necessary. So, we showed you, like in a nutshell, how the technology works behind the Hollands. So now we want to show you our project that we did during our first semester and our studies. So for that, we used different kind of imaging. And the first imaging was used in order to create a patient's 3D model. Usually, the doctors use X-ray. And X-ray was one of the oldest imaging technologies that they used in order to create images from the patient. Nowadays, we have something more modern. It's called computer tomography. So as you can see, we have X-ray generator from one side, and we have detector on the other side. The rays go to the patient, and then using the computational power, we are actually able to take the patient's body and put it in a computer. So actually, we can reconstruct it either as a 2D image or as a 3D model, as you can see here on the image, and then use it for our application. The second imaging was typical X-ray that we used, and this is the information that the surgeon, the surgeon needs during the surgery. So we want to know what is happening with the patient at a certain point of time. As you can see on the left side, we have this machine, which is called X-ray machine, or CR, uh, which can generates the X-rays towards the patient, and the surgeon uh, needs to position the CR in a way so he can be able to see the information. The traditional procedure works in a way that they communicate between each other. And they have a specific language how the sphere should be changed in order to reach the exact position. We think that there might be or must be a better solution which will give the surgeon completely sterile and intuitive way of interaction. So now we want to show you how we develop step by step our solution. So for our project, the pipeline is the following. So after the surgery starts, the X-ray machine will take an image and the initial position. And then at a certain point in time during the operation, the surgeon might decide to change the position of the X-ray machine. So what he does is he selects a position on a 3D model of a patient. And then afterwards, the X-ray machine is going to adjust to exactly this position and will generate a new X-ray. And in the end, this X-ray is then displayed to the surgeon again in order to see the actual imaging. But let's have a look. So here you can see the virtual model of the X-ray machine and the virtual patient. Of course, in a real scenario, both will be, for example, the, the X-ray machine will be a real X-ray and the patient will, of course, also be a real patient. So then we have also the X-ray on the left side that is displayed for the doctor that is actually what he wants to see. And then we have the, on the right side the 3D model of the patient um, and in the middle a blue cone which basically tells us from which direction the X-ray is currently shot through the patient and the imaging is basically done. So now we want to change this X-ray, we want to change the angle from which we shoot the rays through the patient. So we take our hands 
and now remember this uh, x-ray because now we're going to change it. So we take our hands and basically rotate this model. And once we're satisfied with our position, we click the apply button. And as we can see, the x-ray has changed, the x-ray device Xeon has changed, and also the x-ray that is displayed is now a different one from actually this position. Now we can repeat this whole procedure as often as we want. And again, you see the one or two hands in order to rotate this patient model. And again, once we're satisfied with this position, we can click the apply button. And again, the x-ray changed and the device also changed its position. Now, again, we can repeat this as often as we want. And once again, like when, when we're finished, when we saw everything we want to see, then we can just stop the application and continue our surgery. So we showed you different kind of applications and how mental reality can be integrated into the medical workflow. But maybe you're asking, like, are these solutions available nowadays? And I can tell you that these solutions are in research. And mostly, by my opinion, why they are still in research is that we still face some challenges. And the first challenge is that they shouldn't make the workflow more complicated than the workflow actually is. So they should make it as simple as possible. Also, they should be easy to use. So we don't want to have doctors or nurses to spend some more time in order to learn how to use the method reality applications on their own itself. And last, which is the most important thing because we are talking about medical application, they should benefit the outcome from the surgery. And when we are talking about benefiting the outcome of the surgery, we are talking about reduce time of operation, so we want to have shorter time of operation. Also, we want less trauma for the patient, and we want to have a better healing process for the patient. When we achieve these concepts, or like when we are able to reassemble these concepts, I would say that augmented reality will definitely go into production. So if we go back to the first clip that we saw, we cannot say that we reassembled everything 100% from this side of the movie that we see here, but we have the interaction. The one thing that is different is that we need the special equipment. And we can only ask ourselves, what will the future bring? Thank you very much.